Yeah. Let's go. He's saying it's the money. He's saying the money's already there. Whatever Mike asked for is there. It's there. Let's go, yeah. no, I that, got you. I got you. I mean, listen. I, I, I believe. believe you, I, I, I honestly believe in my heart, in my heart, that Brownsville, Brooklyn, is a special place. It was a dump. Mike Tyson told me it was a dump before it was a neighborhood, and then it turned into a neighborhood, the worst neighborhood wow. ever. Jewish ghetto. Polish ghetto, Italian ghetto, always a ghetto. Black ghetto. Now, you got champions that came out of this neighborhood that had brought over $1 billion to the sport of boxing. Dab Judah, Curtis Steven, Danny Jacobs, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. They got a new kid named Shushu. He a beast. They got a kid heavyweight named Solomon, I heard, from Amboy. He a beast. You feel me? Yeah. Riddick Bowe, Mike Tyson. And it's the champ standing the cannon. And look, over close to a billion, if not, I'm sure over a billion dollars in revenue to the score of sport of boxing. We don't have a gym. Imagine a gym in Brownsville. Imagine we had a gym on Pickin Avenue. Ooh, the world would go crazy. So many fighters would come out of there, champ. Shannon and Cannon on the line with us. Shannon, what do you think about what people are saying on the internet regarding Mike Tyson competing with real heavyweight contenders and champions out there? I mean, I've read comments like, a Mike Tyson can knock out a Deontay Wilder, or he can beat a, a Anthony Joshua. How do you really feel about those statements? Um, we won't know until the exhibition after, you know, after the exhibition, and then after we we'll see what's, you know, what's left for the tank. <laughs> <laughs> but how I does the ex, is, ex, is the exhibition is going going to be judged, or, or like how does that work? Nah, it's for charity. It's fun. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna move around. And, you know, but he's Mike Tyson we talk about, man. He might flip. He might hit a switch. When the bell rings, he might be like, he might think of something else. And he naturally hit hard. So he might hit me and break my ribs or some shit. I got to be fully prepared. If this happens, I can't. This is Mike Tyson, man. I love Mike. He crazy. He might flip and screw it, click, and just devour me. And then y'all going to be yeah, like, yo, look can't. at him. Wait, wait. Then y'all no. going to be like, look. Then y'all going to be like, be ready for Wilder. They don't be like he's ready to <laughs> right? I don't, Keep it real. I don't think so, Cannon. Cannon, I don't think so. I this is this is what I think. Can you separate the love and respect that you have? Because you always show that for Tyson. Can you separate that and get in that ring? And just in case that happens, you give him back what he's given. Yes, I, I respect him. I love him. I wouldn't be where I, I'm at in life. See this house? I wouldn't have it if it wasn't for Mike Tyson. He inspired me to get out of Browns. I was homeless. Living in Brownsville, we got kicked out of Atlantic Towers. I was living, I was living all over Brooklyn. Me and my moms. I'm a single, ch- single parent. I didn't have no brothers and sisters. I, I was spoiled rotten. I had everything all my life. And then we lost everything. And then Mike Tyson was getting money on TV. He was, he was getting money, knocking people out. And I was like, wow, that's a, that may be a hustle. You feel me? That might be a hustle. So he was the catalyst, and he was right from down the street from me, guys. I lived in Atlantic Towers. He lived on Atlantic Avenue. I lived between Pacific and Atlantic. He lived right in the corner. My, the guy who lived in my building, Rusty, Money Russ, was his best friend. When I was on Mike's show, we talked easily. That was my best friend in the world, Money Russ. I said, come on, he used to babysit me. As a kid, my mom used to say, Look, Rusty, watch my baby. You feel me? So there was such a connection. And then when he when he got, when he got lost his crib, his moms, they lost their house, and they went down the hill to Amboy. We moved down the hill to Marcus Garvey which is a block away from Amboy. We lived on in Bristol, in Hopkinson. He lived right there, Amboy. So my dad, and then look, 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 Cam. Then he went to jail, and he and, and to, he went up state 79, 80, whatever, to, to, to reform school, and he met Casamato. And his first trainer was Hustin who? Teddy Atlas. Huh? Teddy Atlas. Wow. Who was my first trainer, pro trainer? Teddy Atlas. <laughs> You guys are too connected. Too connected. Connected, That's champ. Crazy. Connected, champ. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I think... But listen... Go ahead, champ. I apologize. No, no I'm saying I, I think it's, it'll be epic. I think to see both of you guys, even in just a 